Now we are having the second question over here. It says that a function is defined like this for all real values for x and a sequence of transformation is applied on this function to transform this f of x into g of x. And here are the functions transformation that we are applying on this function to get g of x. So what we are doing, let's understand. So g of x is what we are trying to form by transforming this particular function of x. So what is the first thing we are doing? We are having a stretch parallel to x axis with a scale factor of half. So according to our rules of transformation, this basically means that this is nothing but x has been converted to 2x. So if I'm having 2x written over here, it basically means that it's a stretch parallel to x axis with a scale factor of 1 over this 2. So that's the first condition. The second condition is the reflection in y-axis. So what does the reflection in y-axis mean? For example, let's just assume that this is a quadratic equation, uh, which is looking something like this. Just an example. So what is a reflection in y-axis? It simply means that this equation is now going to look like, or this curve is now going to look like this. Right? This y-axis is acting like a mirror. These values have been shifted to this. And all these values has been shifted to the left side. So basically we are having the changes of X values. So now because we are doing the changes in X, it's going to have a minus side inside the bracket. So this condition is also done. Now we are left with the third condition. That is a stretch parallel to Y axis with a scale factor of three. Now, because we are uh, in the Y axis, we are going to go ahead and do the changes in the outside part. And because it's a scale factor, we are just going to multiply this whole thing by 3. So your g of x is nothing but 3 times function where inputs are now changed from x to minus 2x. So that's your g of x. So we can now go ahead and expand this. Right? So if we do that, uh, we are going to get therefore g of x is equal to let's skip 3 out and the function with the input of minus 2 now becomes, this is minus 2x squared, minus 2x squared. Then we are having minus 2 and inside this x, we are having this minus 2x. And lastly, we are having this plus 5. Now, obviously, you can go ahead and simplify this very quickly. The, the best method that comes to your mind. I'll do it step by step. So this is 3. This becomes minus 2 square is 4, x square is 4x square, basically over here. This plus, this minus minus becomes plus, 2 times 2 is 4, and we are having an x, and lastly we are having a 5. And now once we open this bracket, th that's going to give us the final g of x. So what's g of x that we are having? It's actually 12x squared plus 12x plus 15. So that's your final answer of question 2.